let's go to Ramsey and um, uh, look at uh, three things, really. The flood defence in Ramsey, the marina in Ramsey, and Ramsey Pier. How are things progressing? Well, hopefully very well. With all this bad weather, I'm always <laughs> very reticent because Ramsey e was um, highlighted as long uh, as well as Laxey and, and various other um, uh, communities around the coast as being a high risk area. In terms of flood defences, we tend to get problems with coast, what's now called coastal overtopping, which is a lovely term for, for flooding coming in from the sea. And I know that DOI have been working very closely with the Ramsey Town Commissioners in terms of putting up flood defences around the harbour. Now, we've got a working harbour, so those need to be sympathetic with the wishes and, and the needs of the fishermen. But they've given presentations to the commissioners. The commissioners had some, some reservations about parking, but that can move forward now. Manx Utilities are also doing some work in terms of some of the rivers, particularly the Selby River, and the way that that sometimes adds to flooding when you have high tides and heavy rains. So quite a lot of work's being done there. But again, I'm hoping over the next year um, to 18 months, pe local people can see the benefits, see the infrastructure going in. Uh, it's always difficult to absolutely prevent flooding, but I think we, sh we, can, we should do as much as we can um, to mitigate it. In terms of the peer, um, the, the charity that's doing a lot of work on that are carrying on now obviously the bad weather doesn't help them as well but they've got the iron work in now local people have been um, donating quite a lot of money to get the new planks and it would be really great to see the first stage of that um, being brought back into operation so people can start walking out onto the pier for the first time in decades um, so flood defences are going ahead the pier is going ahead in terms of the marina I, I'm, I'm open-minded about this if people want to invest in the town I think they should be given a, you know, a fair go. I know that there, there have been various plans over the past decade for marinas um, in Ramsey, and each one has got its pros and cons. Now, the latest proposal was for uh, a marina actually using some of the coastline in between the Stone Pier and, and the Queen's Pier, and I think the consortium behind that are going ahead in terms of uh, approaching the Department of Infrastructure, getting a license, really, the, an agreement, so they can start doing some of the environmental impact assessments that they need to do, start doing some of, some of the work to see whether this would actually be able to, to, to progress. But again, this is a private scheme without government money. Um, I think that any large marina scheme on, on the Isle of Man could help the local communities, could bring money and visitors to, to our island. However, it needs to be done in a sympathetic, sympathetic way, and it needs to take on the views of, of local residents as well. Uh, your uh, chair of Manx Utilities Authority. Do you know what caused that, Sonny? Do you know what caused the uh, the power cut in Andrews? By the way? Yeah, I'm I'm really sorry about that because it did affect a, a large number of people, and it was um, about the time that it starts getting dark as well, and all the lights went out. We're looking into that. It seemed to be what one of the main cables coming in. It was a, alongside some really bad weather, and we had all the crews mobilised that we could to try to put that back back um, to to. Um, to, to normal as soon as possible but I know that local residents were um, without power for a good number of hours and I do apologise for that. We've put it right now but we need to make sure that those sort of um, slightly more remote areas are resilient as possible and what we're looking at, at now in terms of the Andrus area is to look at the whole grid system there and reinforce it, reinforce it as much as possible so this doesn't happen again. Um, regarding uh, the utilities, uh, let's move on to electric vehicles now and uh, the likelihood, possibility or probability of lots of charging points around the Isle of Man. Yep. Will it be? Will they be private points or will they be Manx Utilities points? What we've seen is is a lot of political emphasis on electric vehicles, and, and Boris Johnson made the big announcement that they were going to ban sales of anything apart from electric by 2035 in the United Kingdom. We don't have to follow suit. We can do our own thing on the Isle of Man. But I think when you look at the car manufacturers, more and more of the vehicles we're going to be offered are going to be electric. On the Isle of Man, a lot of people do have access to off-street parking if they leave, live outside the, 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 main, the main towns. And so for them, plugging in in their garage, things like that, would be relatively straightforward. But we also need to deal with those people who haven't got off-street parking, park their, their cars in the, in the street and need to charge it. Range anxiety, I think, will get far less because some of the modern cars can run for four or 500 miles without, without a charge. But we need to provide on-street charging. We need to provide charging in things like car parks. We need to also, and that will be public charging. It will be run by Manx Utilities. 
we will charge for the electricity and we should be able to make an announcement in the next few weeks in terms of exactly where those new charges charging points were going to are going to be and we're planning to roll that out as more and more people get electric vehicles that they can charge them on the street the other aspect is making sure that those local businesses who want to put charging points in we can help them do that so there's already quite a big quite a few of the large companies that put charging points in their car parks for their staff but i would like to see some of the supermarkets do it I'd like to see, for instance, some of the restaurants being able to do it. So you can go in, have a cup of coffee, charge your car while you're in there, and come out and then carry on with your normal day-to-day business. So it's a, it's going to be a mixture, I think, of public and private and lots of people charging at home. We've already done some work in terms of making sure the grid can cope with it, and we can. So now it's rolling it out, again, in, in a measured way. Nobody wants to see thousands of charging points when we've only got hundreds mm. of cars, but rolling out, out in, in a measured way so that everyone is provided. That's going to be my next point. If we have two or 3,000 people charging, charging their cars at night the grid can stand that can it it can i mean the the electricity use on on the other man mirrors that uh, uh, across the world in that you get these peaks and troughs so overnight actually the electricity usage goes right down um, when people get home from from work um, put the telly on and put the kettle on for a cup of tea it suddenly spikes and what we're trying to do is try to even that out a little bit so ideally if people can charge their cars at o- overnight using a, a cheap tariff that we currently provide that would be great in terms of balancing our supply and demand but looking forward when we look at using electricity far more for heating homes as well if we can move towards time of use tariffs so that people can get cheap electricity overnight when when we've got plenty of it and perhaps have to pay a premium during the peak periods where we're struggling then that that would be a way forward is there a system at the moment where people who charge their cars can get cheap electricity overnight there, there is indeed that we have two special tariffs one is for electric heating one is for electric electric vehicles and they both give relatively low pro- cost electricity um, out for, for certain times of the day for, for those particular uses. 